Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. I remember something really profound that actually my wise mom said to me right after I got divorced. And she said, you know, Kim, you have to be okay with being by yourself before you can truly be ready for someone else. And I just remember really not believing her at the time. I'll be honest. I, and as I was going online, scrolling for my next husband and feeling the loneliness and countless dates and conversations that would go nowhere fast. And the truth of the matter was that I didn't slow down enough and allow myself to feel the impact of what happened, what happened in the divorce, what happened with my feelings and with my new life. And I thought by finding someone else, I could just, you know, continue on with the new person and just pick up where I left off. Well, boy, was I wrong. I wasn't okay being alone and I didn't allow myself to feel what I was feeling. So It wasn't until I started slowing down, doing the work and filling myself up. And this is, this is the, really the theme of today, enriching my life by making myself happy and not relying on a man is when, guess what? I started attracting healthy men into my life, attracting healthy relationships, both with men and women, by the way, too. So here's the thing, like human beings one of our deepest rooted desires is to have a meaningful and happy existence, right? Like, and you've probably heard people say, live your best life. And it's good advice, but what does that really mean to live your best life? Are you living your life with balance of internal and external validation? Okay, these are psychobabble terms, so let me explain. External validation means that you are getting your feelings of self-worth based on sources outside yourself. So like you'll get compliments from your date, you know, having a ton of dates lined up on your phone, blowing up, you know, basically that constant dopamine hit that you get from outside sources. And while these validations can feel really good in the moment, the problem with that is that it doesn't last, right? So then you're looking for the next hit. And because you're relying on that outside validation, when it's not there, the feeling wears off and you find yourself feeling bad again. And then the cycle continues over and over again. Now, internal validation is the validation of your own feelings or non-judgment of your feelings. This allows you to release some of that judgment you may have around your feelings and create your own happiness. So being internally validated can be helpful in situations that arise that may not be going your way. So instead of feeling frustrated or deflated, this allows you to recognize that you've done the best you can. And that next time, guess what? You can do better. Or maybe that, that thing that happened wasn't right for you. So if someone ghosts you, right? Like maybe before, if you're relying on that external validation, it's devastating. Like you feel horrible and you're rejected and all those things come up. But once, once you fill yourself up and you're okay and being happy with you, you brush it off and say, you know what? That wasn't the right person for me. And thank goodness I dodged a bullet. It's a different mindset. It's a different way of being and feeling. And when you're filled with your own happiness and life to attract something different, that is where the resilience comes in. So you are a unique individual. So living your best life is exclusive to you and it really determines what you attract. And as long as you're filling yourself up and making you happy, you can do really whatever you want. Your best life will reflect your true values. It will be made up of what makes you happy, whether that is finding a partner, a travel buddy, more friends, enjoying flying solo. It's like whatever it is that you want. So you got to ask yourself, are you proud of the person you are today? Do you like who you are? Are you happy within? If your answer to any of these questions is no, well, you may need to re-examine your beliefs, your perceptions, and goals in order to attract the right people in your life. 
Learning how to fall in love with yourself is essential to your own happiness, to your success in relationships, and to the way that you interact with the world, no matter if you are looking for a partner, a date, or even enjoying living solo. So with me today is a special woman and friend, a dear friend who I actually just reconnected with after many, many years, and she has a unique background. So I'm I'm super excited for this conversation and personal stories that will inspire you to live your best life solo first no matter what you want, even if you're looking for a relationship. She is the host of Wandry's hit show, Hollywood and Crime. It's awesome. You have to check it out. She has an extensive background in radio and audio production. I'm a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie. Having her on here, she's got her start in the audio world as a voiceover artist, so she definitely has found her voice. She then became a podcast producer for VoiceBank.net, where she interviewed, recorded, and edited podcasts about the voiceover industry. She is also a freelance lifestyle, arts, and culture writer. Oh, and did I mention that she is single, living solo, and loving it. Tracy Patton, are you there? I am, Kim. Thank Ah. you for that great introduction. Oh my God. Well, this is you. More though, your insights. Thank you for those your insights. I love it. Oh, well, no, thank you. And I, again, it's so special. I was trying to think when, when did we meet? Like how long have we known each other? We met through first Tuesday and I'm going to say 10 years ago. I think it might've been 10 years ago. Wow. Wow. Well, and as the universe has it, like serendipitous, it was serendipitous, you know, that you just kind of texted me out of the blue and I love that. I love that we got reconnected because I think there is a message here and and that's what I want to talk about. Well, maybe, you know, I I did enough talk. I'd love for you to share a little bit about just, you know, kind of your story and what inspired you to get into this. And then also like this whole notion of living your best life, because I know a lot, lots of things have happened in your story. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it's interesting, the whole solo thing. And I love saying solo instead of single. Yeah, I have been pretty much solo my whole life. I mean, I've had some romances, the usual and, you know, fell in love with this guy, you know, was on and off again, your typical thing. Uh, But I've just kind of fallen into this being solo. And I don't know. It's probably because I traveled, my dad worked for the airlines and I traveled, you know, my whole life and I traveled by myself with airline passes and had lots of Mm. adventures. So I kind of grew into this lifestyle that I'm in right now. Um, You know, it's, I'm, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about myself, not being a couple Mm -hmm. and not feeling the need to be a couple. Yes. I would love to, you know, have some fabulous romance and the whole thing that we all, you know, we think about and how great that would be. But I also think, like you said, Kim, it definitely takes a courage to be by yourself and be okay with it. And what happens is you get to know yourself and there are ups and downs. It's not like it's always perfect, but it is that it really does build a deeper, stronger sense of self when you can thrive on your own. It's so true. And, you know, I think this is a really important conversation because, you know, I, I think, especially even on my podcast, we focus so much on relationships and getting dates and, you know, and, and, but really at the end of the day, and even when I'm working with clients, whether they find somebody or not, even at the end of our coaching, what everybody says that they get is that they, they finally love themselves. Like, that's what to me is the greatest love of them all. And I don't think like I've ever really talked about it in the way that like we're discussing it because it is, you know, that, like you said, like, wouldn't that be nice to have the fairy tale, you know, story happen? I, I'm curious because I, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening and say, well, but I do want somebody in my life. And, and like, where do I start? you know, how, how can I just be happy with where I am right now, regardless, you know? Yeah. 
what I find is uh, rituals. Yeah. Having rituals. So I, and I also have to say, I have kind of a companion. His name is Rick. He's my hummingbird. Oh. <laughs> he lives on my balcony. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been living on my balcony for years. It's it's mm-hmm. crazy. And of course I have sugar water, so I'm the drug pusher. But I see him every morning. So when I get up at six o'clock, I love getting up really early, especially when it's light. And I see Rick because he's usually sitting there perched and mm-hmm. I say hi to him. And then I meditate. Then I go for my run. And then I do my Spanish, just these little things that I do for myself. And it's very grounding to have rituals. I think it, and especially in the morning when you get up, I think it's super important. And obviously if people have kids and other things that distract them, that's hard. But if you're, if you are on your own, it's a great way to begin. And also what I do is when I go for my run, which I'm just getting back able to do that now because I fractured my shoulder, which was is a whole other interesting adventure. And I'm back healing from that. Um, is having mantras, having mm. positive, whatever you want to pull from wherever, just have your little, I mean, I just, they're like sentences. They're, they're personal, motivational, thoughts that I love and I use when I'm out running I have like even today I came up with a new one um thank you today today is the day of my best life not today is the first day Uh, Mm -hmm. I just it just I just said that and it's just simple and just different things like that really help ground me you know what I love about that too is that it's very present you know, I yes. think that a lot of times, and, and to your point, we hear even statements or saying about our future and all, all the things, or we're worried about things that have happened to us in the past. So, you know, that also burdens us. But by doing these daily rituals keeps us very present. And it's like, what can I do each day, today, to really you know, feel good about myself. And that relates to dating too. I mean, I I have so many people who are just so caught up and worried about, you know, the next person and vetting their next boyfriend or girlfriend and looking, you know, it's like, how can you just stay present and connected first with yourself? And then you can be more present with others. Yeah. You know, I have to say, I keep thinking about Carrie Bradshaw in that last episode, that last word, the last phrase she, which I'm sure most of your listeners know this. And it's just one of those things that sticks with me. If you can find, if you can find that person who loves, who loves the love, who loves the person you love, well, then that's just fabulous. Yeah. And I just think that's really, I mean, it's okay. It's a fictional show, but that notion of when you can love, when you find someone, if that's the path you want to be on and they love the you who you love, Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's golden. That is golden. In the meantime, I, I think it's absolutely key to be that person you love. And it's not, it's not easy every day. It's not like we just are so happy every day. And I'm, you know, and you mentioned something else. I'm sort of digressing a little bit here, but about the rejection and how you handle that. And, and there, and I'm in the creative world. So mm-hmm. enter rejection. <laughs> Okay. Insert so here. here. <laughs> and here's an example. And I, I won't go into any detail, but in my world now, because I'm known in this world, I get people, companies, you know, big companies contacting me for projects. And so this one particular one was out of the blue and it was a, it's a big company. It's a big studio. And I didn't end up getting to do that. I was the top of their list to be the host of this project. And I just checked out who, you know, what new direction they went in other direction. And it was another woman who's in the same industry. So I thought about that today. And I thought, 
I can go either way. This is for everyone, you know, as you navigate your lives and especially solo, being your own cheerleader. Because what I've learned in this entertainment mm. world is you can take that rejection because it doesn't feel very good, especially when it's somebody who it's not like it was a guy or somebody completely a whole different direction. I thought, OK, you know what, I'm going to use this energy, this instead of feeling rejected and and energize my other projects. I, I have some other projects I'm working on mm. and. I really feel like that's super valuable because you can sit in that, oh, I should have gotten that. How come I didn't get it? How come they didn't choose me? Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't matter. How come it, the guy didn't the like me? Is, see, <laughs> and you know what? I should do a book on that, you know, using the whole entertainment world and rejection and and how, how you deal with that. It's like the best way. It, it's like, you know what it is? It's a great challenge. Like, yeah. this is a challenge. And when I fractured my shoulder, one of my thoughts, and I healed fast because I like I got back up and I'm like, okay, what are you made of? What are you made of? That was my self-talk. So like in this situation, the rejection stuff, it's like, okay, you got rejected for whatever reason. What are you made of? Yeah. Who are you? This is a, that's an opportunity to figure out who you are and how, and, and, and if we can depend on those in that inner part of ourselves and, and really have, and find that anchor, we got to find the anchor mm -hmm. and, and, and everybody has a different path to doing that. And these rituals circling back to this whole notion yeah. is like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Know? And, and when you read, you know, books that motivational books and, you know, the, YouTube is filled with stuff, Wayne Dyer, all those kinds of, you know, the 15, 10 minute things you can see on YouTube and you can glean some golden nuggets are, they're very helpful and quotes, great quotes on social media mm. are super helpful. I love so that. I think that, that I, if we can look at rejection any negativity and say, what are we, what are we made of in that moment? And just be aware and just be present. It can change things because like for my healing, it's a metaphor. It's been a metaphor for my life. And I just chose to see healing every day, getting better and better rather than why did this have to happen? And I feel like that made the difference. And I think I can incorporate that into other parts of my life. There's so many great things that you just said. I just want to, I just want to extract some of them because I'm like, oh my God, my brain. I forgot like everything. Floating. I don't even remember. No, I, I, I'm gonna, I just want to put some buttons on these pieces that you just brought out. So, I mean, one thing that you said that's really true, and, and this is how I talk about confidence, by the way, is that confidence simply is experience, right? Like yeah. the way that you toughened your skin up a little bit was getting a lot of experience around rejection, right? right. And so, right. And, and but it's how you deal with it is what's important. And, and what you learned is to not fall victim to it, right? But to actually embrace it and use it as energy to thrust you into the next thing. And that's crucial. That's crucial when it comes to that. Yeah, you want to say something? And I think we, I think if we're awake, um, I won't say woke, I already did, but awake <laughs> and aware and can step away from ourselves and observe in these moments, that mm. is so helpful. It's so grounding. Yeah, it, it, no, it really is. And I always say that adversity too is always gifts in disguise, but it's not until we're through it and we look back and we say, oh, <laughs> there was the gift. I didn't realize right. it at the time because it feels that's crappy right. as you're going through it. Well, and that's why experience, when we go through it, then we know what to look for, right? Yeah. And by yeah. the way, the one thing I was going to say, Kim, on the other side, on the other side of the coin, when we sold our show to Wondery, Hollywood and Crime, which was a very big deal. And it was the very first original show they bought. I can remember feeling nervous about it. It was like, oh my God, this is great. Oh, can I really do this? So that, you know, that also can happen. 
that can also be something to be aware of. I want to actually talk about that. I'm glad you brought that up because it, there's a lot of second guessing that happens when you're alone and when you're like working on this stuff, you know, the inner work and your own happiness. And you might start feeling like, oh, do I even deserve something else? What would you say the difference? Because this can be actually confusing too. Of and And maybe this is just for yourself of using like, being alone or just like kind of hiding in a cocoon, so to speak, out of fear or, you know, not wanting something to happen based on like other hurts that you've had in the past versus choosing to be alone, to be happy and work on yourself. Because there's a fine distinction, right? Like I've seen some clients are just like, oh, I'm just working on myself. I'm just going to be solo for a while, but they're really not they're, they're just more scared. So I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. And that's really interesting. Cause, and I think they're also, um, sort of waiting, right. Okay. Well, I'll do this until he comes along. There's yes. That. That happens, yes. And it happens to all of us. Look, I right. get that. I understand, but it is that I think challenge yourself when you're solo to be solo and be happy. And that's a challenge right there. And listen, I have plenty of down times. I have plenty of times of the self, like you said, the self doubt when you're by yourself, right? And you, and you think, oh, you know, and especially getting older, that's a whole other show. Right. And that's <laughs> a part, part two. <laughs> Jane Fonda was on to. Jane Fonda was on The View today and she said, they asked her, what, what would you tell your younger self? And she said, don't give up. It gets so much better the older you get. And I was like almost in tears. So there's an example of a moment mm -hmm. when you hear from somebody like her, who's 80, um, and you go, wow, yes, this is great. Okay. That was just like those kinds of nuggets as you're sitting there by yourself that you may hear you know, or read or whatever can be really helpful and change things. And also, you know what? It's temporary. The downs are temporary. They are. And I also think the challenge is we got, we got to change our thoughts. And I know everybody's heard that a million times. Why is it so hard? But it is true. If you say, I, I've done this so many times. I've done, especially when I'm out running and I say, oh, this is going to be the most fantastic day. Even when I don't feel great, it makes a difference. And also saying, thank you. Just say it. I've read about that. Just say it, say it, even if you don't feel it, it's a clearing. It's this thing that happens. So whatever you find that works for you, I think those kind of things can help. And I also think, and I don't even know if you caught yourself doing this just now, and it's so beautiful, like it's almost meta to what we're talking about, is your perspective on things. You know, you heard that message from Jane Fonda as a beautiful, like insightful message that you took in as, yeah, I, 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 I should love where I am at my age, you know, but then there's some people who are in the victim mode who might be like, what are you talking about? Age sucks, you know, <laughs> and, and go into Well, and it kind of, you know, right? it kind of does sometimes to be honest. Right. So I was going to say like, how do you combat that? You know, like when you're in that victim mode, like what are some ways to pull yourself out of that? I think letting go. Yeah. I think it's really important to just let go and remind yourself of the nauseating cliche that, you know, well, do you want the alternative? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, you can't control that. We can't control that. So I just, it's like you, it's a constant process. It's yeah. a, it's, it's a constant inner gym, I think. And I personally, and, and I'm in a different world than probably most people in the, in this creative world. Cause I'm writing, working on this novel and it's sort of a bit of a memoir and, and I don't know where it's going to go, you know, but, you know, want to turn it into a series more for that than the novel, but I'm the process of creating mm -hmm. when I work on this, which is daunting to do this much writing. And I'm not toiling away every day, you guys, 
I'm not doing what you really are supposed to be doing. But I'll tell you what, when I do that, so whether it's writing in a journal or writing in your manuscript or some story that you're creating, it feels so good. It Mm. really makes a difference. So there's something about the creative process. So maybe that's really what it is, what's happening. It's not the writing, it's the creation. So whatever creative passion you have, do that and and, and have that there for yourself. You don't have to turn it into a career. It's, it's a hard, it's a hard path. The creative path is a, it's a, it's a non-linear path. But just being in that experience, I think that's being present. I think that's what happens because you do that and you have to be present. Absolutely. And I love the whole creativity. I mean, you know, I give my clients homework. People who know me know this, Um, but my homework's always fun. And one of the things that I always tell people to do is to tap into their inner child, their passions, their hobbies, doing things creatively. And, you know, there's two things I always make my clients do. One is take an improv class and two, take a salsa dancing class because Right. Like it taps into that sensuality, the the body, the playfulness, the expression, and it is a letting go, as you said. And I think the more things we can do in our creativity, it gets us out of our head too. Like that, because that's what stops so many of us. You know, it's like we get the best of us. We start overthinking things, that kind of thing. So I love that you you, you said that. And I have a question because it, it's kind of bringing us to, to that happiness piece. How, how did you know that you were really, truly happy being solo and choosing the life that you have chosen? Like, how does someone really know that? You know, it's, I, I really bring it back to travel. I think it's when I started mm. traveling by myself. Yeah. Because of these airline passes you get when you're, you know, you're my dad, you know, with the airlines and, and back in the day, for all you millennials listening and Gen Z, <laughs> you know, it was traveler's checks, no credit cards. And I was traveling alone at 18 to Europe. And you'd, I'd get on these flights. I never knew where, whether I would get on the flights. My, and we didn't have cell phones either, by no, the way. Of we course, had, no cell phones. No cell phones. And so I really, th- Kim, that's a really good question because I really think that's, I love being in other places, but I think when I traveled by myself, because I kind of had to, at least en route to meet up with friends, because I only had one friend who had the same kind of travel benefits. Mm-hmm. I... I remember, okay, one very specific example. I was 18. I got stuck in Paris at at the airport. I just, because I was going to Greece to meet up with my friends and I couldn't get on the flights because I had to go standby because of my passes. So I stayed in the airport. And wow, it was so, it was so cool. It was like, oh, I can trust myself. And I loved being by myself because I met different people. Some guy was going to South America, wanted me to go have a glass of wine with him. I'm like 18 years old, you know, <laughs> uh, but it, it opens, it opens up new opportunities when you're by yourself because you really do. It's a totally different experience. And I find yeah. it exhilarating Yeah, and I've never looked back. <laughs> And I have to get, help myself to want to be like, could I be a couple? Again, that's another podcast, yes, that's right. another, another discussion, because that's another challenge. But there's something absolutely delicious mm. when you're by yourself, whether you're, you know, locally, you don't have to go to some exotic destination and, and feeling comfortable because when you can feel comfortable going to a movie, going out to dinner by yourself or going to a cafe alone, um, I think that's very empowering. It's extremely empowering. And it forces you to also open yourself up to possibilities and meeting people more so than when you have the crutch of your friends or, you know, like kind of your, your comfort zone. No, because one of the and things I tell people all the time is to go to happy hour by yourself and force yourself to sit at the bar, whether you drink or not, doesn't really matter. And just 
have a chat with somebody next to you. Like what, what would that be like? And I even did a podcast. I called it um, vacation mentality. It's, it's exactly what you're talking about. Like, and how can you use that like vacation mentality in every day of your life? Like what if you treated your life as a vacation every single day? Cause you're more open, you're more curious, you know, you're more apt to ask questions and be open to things. So I, I think that is brilliant, Kim. I love yeah. that. No, and, and it's true. And I know I'll just throw myself under the bus for me when I knew I was truly happy being by myself was there was a switch that happened from the story I told in the beginning with my mom saying what she said and thinking she was silly. And like, I just remember if my calendar wasn't filled, you know, like going on dates or going out with friends and doing all these different things, I just found myself being really lonely and like, oh my God, like I, I don't have plans tonight. You know, <laughs> like what, what can I do? What can I do? And the switch is now, if I have a moment to myself and I don't have plans, I'm like, ah, oh, this is nice. I'm going to date myself tonight. You know, like I'm going to cook myself dinner, you know, and, and when you're, it's that perspective switch. And there was something that happened also in my body and the way that I just, I felt for me, I knew that that's when things started settling within. I don't know if that Makes sense, or if you experience stuff like that, and yeah, and I, I, I think I'm so used to it. I'm almost too used to it, and I get a little mm. worried about that part because I'm very yeah. social. I, I am very social. I love meeting people, but it, I, maybe it's COVID as well. Of course, we can always we can right. all relate to all of that. But I do. I and yes, when I was younger, I always had to go out and you know have plans. And now I don't need to. And I also wonder, Kim, are we, what are we afraid of if we don't have plans? And, and just put that out there in a very general sense, asking myself the same question. We, it's like, what is it that are we afraid that time is passing by and the FOMO thing, which by the way, I wrote an article about that like a decade ago and now it's a mm. thing FOMO oh You're I love that <laughs> yeah but there is that FOMO thing mm -hmm. I think there's some truth to it. it and and what is that about right is that we don't want to to delve into who we really are because the satisfaction I get from seeing Rick every day, I'm so silly. If anybody's. Oh my anything. God, I love that. Now I'm I, so curious. I want to see Rick. <laughs> yeah, he's not there right now. But he, it's just, it, 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 in all seriousness, it's so joyous. And, and also hummingbirds, of course, are a metaphor for solo because they do not share, by the way. I have two feeders thinking that I'd have other hummers and they, some of them try to get some some sugar water but ricky just is you know king of the castle and that's how they are so in nature it's something to observe yeah like they are complete solo creatures literally flying solo literally I mean, flying literally. solo mm. absolutely so i kind of when i look at the hummers and look at his behavior I just think about that. I think how much I would like to be flying around too. <laughs> well, there's a freedom. I mean, and, and this is what, like, there's a freedom to that too. You know, this notion of being free and flying wherever you want to fly and do whatever you want to do. And I think it is a balancing act between um, not like using that as a crutch out of fear of having a relationship versus just yeah. having the balance of, you know what, I'm okay being me. And being happy with me and whatever happens from here happens, you know? And so Tracy, I know we're going to have to do part two, three, that we, we, there were so many themes that came out of today. Damn, I've learned so much from you. Oh, well, You've it's about learning from each other, you know, and, and some of the things that you're talking about are so important that I don't think like we really touched on before in the show, because you said it in such a way that's just so real and that we all, I mean, it's, it's a journey with all of it. Mm -hmm. um, are there any parting words of wisdom that you want to share as we part with part one? <laughs> I think in, in terms of talking about solo, I, I think that if we really are 
comfortable within ourselves. We won't, we don't we won't need to be looking for that other person. It, I know it's so cliche, but looking sure. for other people to fill us up because it, it ultimately it won't happen. And the other thing is when you're solo and you're looking and you really, well, let's, sorry, if, if you really feel the need to always be a couple and then you end up maybe choosing the wrong people because of that, that's mm-hmm. what can steer you in the wrong direction. And if, you, if you're solo and feeling good and being willing to do that and being willing to be solo, you may prevent yourself from, from getting in those kinds of relationships, those things where you, you put up with a lot of things you don't want to put up with because you don't want to be alone. And if we look at being alone in a different way, I think that can also really make a difference. Amazing. Tracy, that was awesome. So well put. Um, Did you want to plug your show? And uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to share where people can find you, listen to you. Well, I mean, there's Hollywood and crime and there's the, our, we're recording season nine, um, which is um, coming out in June. So, um, it's, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what it is. I think, I, I think I have to wait. We could just do uh, a teasing of it. So yeah, we're flirting with it. And, and wow. Talk about a, a woman on a really strange path. Oh my gosh. Uh, And it's a murder. She got murdered. So anyway, uh, but the one before it, by the way, is Dorothy Stratton, death of a, of a starlet. Uh, which is an incredible story about a woman who who did not trust her own strength. And so very sad, was very sad. So I learned a lot when I do these these stories. I learn mm-hmm. a lot about life, you know, and we do a lot about women in peril. Beautiful. I can't wait. So stay tuned, y'all. Tracy, thank you so much. We'll definitely like do another, I hope. (laughs) Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. It's been a true pleasure. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. Here's the thing. If you think you might need a dating plan and strategies to break your bad dating habits and patterns, then I have a surprise to share with you on something very special happening soon. If you're exhausted by the idea of dating, you don't know how to put yourself out there, you're feeling totally frumpy, you're tired of feeling alone, then grab one of the few seats to join me in my brand new six-week journey. That includes, drumroll, a in-person retreat. I am so excited about this. And I am taking a small group of women to learn how to charm your way to love and stand out and feel sexier than ever before and with a plan. And it's called Spark Your Sexy Live. So if you're curious, just click the link you see in the show notes and then hop on a call with me to explore the possibility. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now. Yeah.